Well, hi there. There's a very important aspect to this toy review. I'm sure there's plenty of people out there who know toys like that. They come with tools. They're sort of like puzzle toys and they're actually a whole lot of fun and they are some of the favourite toys that come through my house. But these days, that sort of fun can come in this style as well and it's basically an app. I won't name this app here but you can basically pick up a piece and you can plonk it on there and you can build your fire engine up. Let's see how good that is here. Do you recognise those apps? But what does that make children? Does that make children really good at um, doing this? I think, you know, we're going to have a whole lot of experts who are good at pushing fingers around. But I've got a funny feeling toys like this develop far different skills. You know, I call 2010, um, I suppose, the time when all this stuff sort of started to kick in. I hope I can build this thing up. It's really testing me, I can tell you. Uh, and the argument is, does this really help you understand how to build things and put things together? Or is it just a bit of play that doesn't teach you about how things actually connect? Oh, I did it. Smart daddy. It's funny, my son pointed this app out to me. But that was only after he played with these toys here. He went and rebuilt these toys. Like, I'm looking at these toys after I did the review a couple of weeks after. And he sort of played with them a bit and he hasn't really come back to them. But that's sort of the nature of toys. And with the app here, I mean, he played with that. And the thing with apps is there seems to be millions of these things. There's a never-ending supply of these things and they tend to be free. So here's this toy here, if I could call it a toy or a puzzle. Which is emulating a toy there. It's for free. And those toys there were $20 each. So there's $20, $40, 60 just in those three toys there. I know for a fact that the toy industry is under fire. This is a 2004 Tommy Thomas toy. Basically 10 years old at the time of making this video. It looks brand new, doesn't it? But this toy is a real insight into how good the toys used to be, in a sense. Unfortunately, I don't think you can pick up a Thomas like that anymore. It was really one that my boy loved. And I love it as well. But this toy here was picked up at the charity shop. And it's interesting, I knew that he would love the toys that I got from Aldi that we're going to look at in this video because he loved this toy here. And they're basically like elaborate puzzles. He enjoyed playing with these toys here. They didn't sort of mix and match as I thought they would. But nevertheless, he has put them back together. You can see that he hasn't colour matched the, the bolts back together. He's got different coloured bolts and different machines. But it's probably all the fun of playing with it. What I've noticed with apps, when he plays with apps, is because there are so many of them, he just basically jumps from app to app, um, and this thing's going to do something else now. You know, this is the thing with apps, is they just keep going on and on and on. Oh, there's another puzzle here. Um, and I don't know, really, it's too early to understand whether this is a big, you know, going to be a big epic fail, or is this just the way we're all going to be? Are we all going to be... These experts at um, basically pushing our fingers around on screens. Is that all we need to do in life these days? That's the big question. You know, it's interesting. Uh, I did watch my son play with this. And even though we're building a 3D, you know, component in there, it's actually a 2D environment that we're playing in. And I was sort of wondering, if I grew up playing with this and trying to understand how to build something with this, would I have ended up being the person? I ended up being a person who's pretty good with their hands. I grew up with these sorts of toys here, although today's version of Meccano, this is Meccano here, is very different to what I had um, when I was a kid because you were building much more basic designs. This is quite stylized, there's a lot of um, curves in this. But the problem solving with Meccano was trying to work out how to get to certain nuts and bolts and basically, you know, making a nice design. And when I had it, it was all basically flat pieces, flat and straight pieces. Was that, it was actually a nice flashback to have this. I found this in the shops. My son was curious about it. Of course, he was a bit young to build this, but I had a great flashback building that. I also grew up with Lego. Uh, Lego is probably the ultimate um, building toy in a sense. But today's Lego, you know, like that Meccano just then, it, today's Lego, when you buy it, it's full of little pieces. It's pre-designed, and there's not much, uh, how would you say, you know, start from scratch design elements that I, I see children doing. Um, but you come back to these toys here, these are vastly different to playing on that app. And I'm sure my son knows that, but he can't, you know, say it as I'm saying it. 
My biggest fear is that, um, you know, people say, oh, but, you know, these toys are expensive. Well, they've actually got their value. That app we're just looking at is free. This toy here was played with many, many times over. You know, this is the thing about these toys. I watched my son the last couple of weeks play with those. You know, I think the one he struggled to put back together a bit was this one here. I, I had to finish it off for him. The, I had to put those engine pieces on and his tail piece, these, these bits here. But it was a bit of a challenge for him. And the fact that they got power pieces as well, that we'll see in this review, is sort of nice. But um, I, I, do, I do really wonder um, whether this whole thing of apps and this move away from toys is going to end up being one big epic fail. Well, hey, hey, look at my boy here. He's playing with those toys that you use a tool. You can pull bits off and you can, you can reassemble them as well. Down the alley, I found these three styles of toys, which are the same sort as the one that my boy loves to play with. Let's get into those and we'll look at a few other toys along the way. And you have to excuse me on this one, I'm suffering the flu at the moment, but I'm going to struggle through and try and make this video. Do you want to make up a new one? Or a new one, which one are you going to do first? Diesel. Diesel? We're calling this one Diesel 10, aren't we? Yeah. Okay, we're going to take a look at this one first. Well, before I destroy this box, it's called a Build and Play Back Hoe Truck. I purchased it from Aldi for $20. In fact, all these toys are $20. On the back of the box, it looks like this. Looks like a whole ton of fun, to be honest. Let's do it. Yeah. And, and Dad? Yes. The Diesel 10 has got ream crew drivers. Yes. Green. It's everywhere. Dad? Yes. You can match and match them. You can yes. put those on and, and all, the, the, all of these on them everywhere. Yeah, you know, you might have a point there. I've got a feeling we could take the bucket from this truck here and put the bucket onto the fire engine. That would yeah. be sort of super cool and but maybe... You can take the bucket off yes. to the... Helicopter, now we're in a helicopter diesel tent. A helicopter diesel tent? Yeah. Whoa, that sounds very cool. Oh, going in for the all important unboxing shot here, which can be rogue at the best of times. Oh my god. What That's can we see? Just oh yeah. Looks good. Now Looks that... like there'd be a bit of extra daddy unboxing here to do. There's some bits of that really. Nasty wire to undo. Oh, we're going to go and try and get this part out here. Anything could happen at the moment, I can tell you. That's it, that's it, yep. Pull. Uh, ah. All your strength. All your strength. Yes. There's the tools, and there's the little screwdriver thing. Dad? Yeah. This will do your work. Look. Oh, yeah. Ah, it's already got batteries installed. Yeah. It's it interesting. It's got a on forward and backwards on the top here but there's no trigger here there's only a button at the top that's a bit different to the other one that we've got which has its controls down on the handle here let's see if the tools fit in let's put a tool in the in the front there okay and this one we got a button on the we're getting down a here. double review here yeah 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 and this one we got a button on the top yes that's funny i they think they both work here. thank you for that that's a that's a double double if ever we've had one. It's too noisy. And Dad, yeah. let's put the toy in. Okay. Can you yeah. even put this one on? Yeah, it's in. Yeah. And? Go. Oh, yeah. And there are some other tool attachments as well, and they look like I that. Know. Oh, and we've just come across the instructions here, and it gives a pretty good explanation of all the bits and bobs of this playset. Which actually looks fairly extensive. There's a bit of daddy wire we've got to undo here at the moment. They look right. Well, my boy had the idea of um, deconstructing the toy to basically unbox it. But I've come in with the pliers and I'm doing my best to free this toy up. I think this sort of wire is the worst stuff you can have in a you know toy packaging to try and get rid of. It's oh, it's oh so difficult sometimes to pull toys out when they've been wired in like this. But I know why toy companies do this, they do this because toys so often get stolen or parts get stolen from the box. But boy oh boy do they make it hard to get stuff out. Well we've got this toy out of the box finally. 
and my boy is just going in for some touch-up repairs there were some loose screws on it and he's undoing stuff as well looks like that bucket's gonna come off oh yeah we're deconstructing already now I really like these toys they are highly educational anything that's like this where you can pull them apart and put them back together and I'm just hoping that we can mix and match the parts of these toys together to make some real funky looking toys Let's take the top piece away there. Yeah. And we're still pulling bits and pieces off this. Oh yeah, he's uh, getting right into this oh toy, I can tell you. Well, this toy didn't stay in one piece for too long. Well, it's looking like a toy destruction zone here at the moment, but it's also a very educational one. And that toy is getting stripped down into smaller and smaller components. Oh, it's all the fun of the fair pulling this toy apart. Wait, wait, this. Oh, oh. Now it's a car. Yeah, now it's a car. It used to be a bulldozer. Now look at it. It's a odd looking car. And I've just been reminded by looking underneath this toy, it's got this great ability where you can get the driver, which is this piece here. You can slide off the back piece here which is probably the reason why we don't have the trigger there so that unit there becomes like the engine that you can then put in in here which way do we put this in can you put that in can i see maybe we need some daddy help to work that one out we're just trying to work it out oh it's in there we are no it's a diesel it's a diesel yeah but the well, well it's just a it's been stripped there we go and the wheels turn wow Let's see if it runs on the ground. Oh my god! It does, yeah. <laughs> it's just the same, it's just, just a shell of what it used to be. Anyway, it does power itself along the ground. And Dad, yes. how did I put the parts on? Do you reckon you could reassemble that one? Yeah, but when it, when it fast food driver. Yeah. What? <laughs> it's a bit of a puzzle, isn't it? And you know what, that's a fairly clever toy, the fact that it uses the driver, which undoes the toy, is also something to power the toy. What's also interesting, it's also powering, there's two little, what you call it, pushes there, that are driven from the motor, and if I carefully put this piece up onto here again, without screwing it on, hopefully I can do this without making a fail here, and I'll turn it on, it powers those exhaust stacks, and that's a sort of cute little feature. It's a strange looking vehicle indeed. Well we are getting into rebuilding mode. Looks like the top's going on. I'm not sure about the tracks. But it looks like it is being rebuilt. Well we're getting there. These are fantastic toys. I've always had a lot of uh, faith in this style of toy. In a great way of learning how to build things and deconstruct and reconstruct things. I'm really curious about this um, helicopter and this, this fire engine as well. I mean, I think I've seen enough of this fantastic um, diesel 10. Oh, but he wants to put the engine in and see it run along the ground, which is fair enough, I suppose. He wants to see it running along as a, as a machine. Okay, give it a spin, even though it's missing its tracks. There it goes, plowing its way through the toys. And you know what, considering I only paid $20, that's actually a very good price toy for what it is. You know, $20, that's $40, that's $60 all up. But I've got a funny feeling they're worth their weight in gold. And look at that, he's carrying his own nuts and bolts there. He's very versatile, isn't he? The next toy in this series we'll look at is the Build and Play Helicopter. I think my boy's hiding behind the box there. It looks like it's quite an elaborate little build. It's got the tool there. I think the tool powers the rotor. 
I think. But we'll have to see when we pull it out of the box. You ready to open this up? Yeah! Yeah, I thought you would be. Let's do it. The all important unboxing shot. Yeah. Now I've got to say, this is a very, very cool looking heli oh, helicopter. I'll tell you, look at that. Engines, it's got a back fin thing. Mom, my boy's getting the uh, bits and bobs out. But this thing looks absolutely fantastic. Well, here are the instructions. It's quite the build, isn't it? But that's the education of this toy. But to escape the box, it's gonna need some of Daddy's help again. I bet you it's got those wires, that impossible wire. Yep. No, you're going to need Daddy's help. I'll do it for you, I think. Okay. Okay. Well, my boy's got to fly now. It was making some cranky sounds on the ground. Yeah, yeah, Go for a fly. I think it goes in reverse better than it goes forward. Let's go for a fly again. And we're flying backwards now. We're flying in circles. Coming for a landing. And now we're probably going to come in for a disassemble. And it's time for the wrecking to begin. Oh, one engine's off. Coming for another engine. Here she goes. Oh, a bit of tail rotor action there. And off it comes. The fun never stops with these sorts of toys, I can assure you. Looks like the whole helicopter shell is going to be disassembled now. Whammo. Okay, it's changing to blue. And half mm, is... It's changed, isn't it? It's a different colour. Wow. Um, wow, it's just a... Uh, it's like something from, un, it's like something from the Octonauts, that thing. Okay, we put the engine in now. That strange blue thing which was the middle of the helicopter. There we go. That's something you don't see every day, isn't it? There you go. It can still fly even though it's missing its body, its tire rotor, its main rotor, its engines. It's still a flying machine. Well, we better get onto our last machine here. Remembering these are $20 toys, but what was also a $20 toy just recently that I picked up was this fantastic Hot Wheels shark chomping thing. This is actually one of my boy's favorite toys. He's had this out and playing for about a week. You want to show us how this one works? Yeah. Give it a burl. Oh yeah, it just attacks anything this thing. It's great. You want to talk about Toy Mojo, that toy there is um, fantastic. It's got lights, it's got sounds, it's got moving bits and bobs. Wow! This Extreme Action Hot Wheels vehicle is very impressive. This is the sort of toy which just um, assaults you in the toy aisles when you see it. My son saw this and he was basically screaming Dad, for it. Dad, look! Yeah, oh, oh, there's another one, yeah. I know, and actually while you've got the box here, it says it's from toystate.com, so I don't know whether this is like a new toy company or what. Um, but I don't know, this toy seems to have all the right things going for it. If I push a certain button here, it'll do this action. Whoa. Don't, don't me run out of fire. I guess I was trying to eat something. And if I push another button on the top here, it'll do this. <laughs> Whoa, watch out, watch out. It's coming after you. Whoa! Where's it going next? Got this main button on the top. Gets the wheels going action. Gets that chomping action going as well. It's one of the better toys that I've seen in the toy stores. I'll tell you, I'm very impressed with this one. 
Very impressed indeed. And if you're really keen, you can give your favourite toy a spin. Everything is awesome! Oops, looks like we're going to try and save Emmett here. He's been eaten by the shark, as sharks do. Now you've got to admit that's a pretty cool Hot Wheels, isn't it? Let's give it one more spin and let it go. Okay, let's get into the fire engine. Oh yeah! Okay, this is the third of these toys, the build and play. It's a fire engine, it's motorized, blah blah, $20 Aldi. Haven't seen these toys anywhere else but Aldi. I wonder if you can tell me if you've seen them in other places. But this looks like it will be as spectacular as the previous two toys. Let's do it. Different style of unboxing here. I like that method. I like it a lot. Well, it's still in the box. You haven't got it out yet. Yeah, but... And now we're going for the more conventional approach of actually opening the box and unboxing it. Oh, we're getting the tool set out. And what's a bit weird, just to be different, on this toy here, we've got these screws to undo to release it from the box. I'll have to go and get a screwdriver. Hey, Dad. Yes. I go through right over here. I don't think that one's going to help. We need a little tiny one but for yeah. these little tiny screws. You can have a go, are you? Well, good luck. I don't think it's going to help. Oh, you're gonna keep trying, aren't you? Anyway, let's be coming and get one of these most famous sorts of shots. Well, here's the instructions to the fire engine. It gets pulled down to its minor components like the other toys. And in this toy here, like all the others, you can put that piece in there underneath. And we can power it along. And there it goes. It's so slow. Yeah, it is a bit slow, this one. Well, we've just swapped out motors there. Hopefully, one with fresher batteries. Oh, that sounds better than that. Well, sort of. Yeah, it's going to be better now. And also, notice the light features move up and down in this as it goes along. Now, what we're going to try and do is make like a diesel 10 fire truck. Try and get the bucket from that one there and fit it onto this fire truck. It's precise work, I can tell you. But we've hit a stumbling block in our engineering madness here. What we're finding is that each of these toys are actually engineered differently in the way they come together. So I can't get this arm at all to fit into the spot where this piece is on the fire engine. That's like the ladder area. The, um, the hub area or the, the main pivot point is engineered totally differently on each toy. And so are the accessories. There's the bucket which would be on that piece there. And then the extension of this one was this piece here. Uh, it just doesn't want to go together. I can't get like that to marry onto that. Okay, let's rip it apart. And all vice versa. So yeah, let's just rip it apart. That's a very good thing to do, I think. And as I follow this complete trail of toy destruction, the fire engine will soon be down to its minor components. And it's very sad that we can't mix and match these toys as I would have liked to, but hey, you can't have everything in a toy, can you? Okay. I've got to say, my boy's having a lot of fun with these toys. Okay. I mean, the real question is, will all these toys get reassembled back into their major components? Is that the last one on the fire engine that come off? Tell you what, it takes you no time at all to pull these things down to nothing. It built build. Yeah. <laughs> it already built. Built? That, no, that's that's unbuilt. That's disassembled. <laughs> it built. You like it like that, don't you? Yeah, but I like wrecking things. I've like, noticed that, like, actually. Like you and wrecking things seem to be <laughs> partners in crime. <laughs> Well, who knows, these toys may or may not go back together. One thing I do notice is that all the screws are the same across these toys. But I don't think I can get any clever mix and matching going on. What was interesting was that the yellow screws came out of the fire truck, is that right? Yeah. The green screws came out of the, what we call the diesel 10. Yeah. 
and the red screws came out of the helicopter. helicopter. So maybe that's the sort of color coding. Even though all the screws are the same, there seem to be different colored screws on different models. So how are we going to build up this? And we need a big color. No, well, you know what? It's your job to now build these toys back together and show us how clever and you are. And we need massive construction. Can you build this up, please? Yeah, but we need a massive construction to build all of these. Do you want to have a go at building these up? Uh, no. I have enough of this. Thanks for watching and bye for now. <coughs> well, there you go. Thanks for watching and... Bye for now.